In grade 11, we also have to know how to work with these contingency tables. They're fairly easy. So let's have a look. In this one, we have a survey that was done at a school in order to determine if there is a link between gender and the sport chosen. The following table summarizes the data. So we've got male, female, and we've got tennis and hockey. So the first question says, determine the unknown letters. Well, these are super easy. So for example, the males, it tells us if we look right to the end over here that there should be 100 males. And so A would have to be 60. And then if we look down the hockey column, well, they tell us that the total of hockey is 150. And so if we say 150 minus 60, then that means C would be 90. That then allows us to calculate B because we know that this column, if we go across, that has to end up being 100. And so B is 10. And then that will allow us to get D because 40 plus 10, well, that means that D's total is 50. And so then you should always do a little check for yourself. Make sure that all the different columns and rows add up. But we can see that with this one, it does. So that was easy. Now, number two, determine the probability that a student plays hockey. Well, out of a total of 200 people, we could say 60, but that would only be the male hockey players. 90 of them, 90 females play hockey. But if we just look at the hockey total, it's 150. So there are 150 out of 200 people who play hockey. You type that in on your calculator and it will simplify it for you as three out of four. Number three, determine the probability that a student plays tennis given that the student is a male. That given word, we encountered that a while back in Venn diagrams. It is extremely important. It says, given that the student is a male. Okay, so we only look at the males for this question, which is that row out of, over there. So there's only 100 of them. We're not going to say 200 anymore. So out of those 100 people, how many of them play tennis? Well, there's 40 of them who play tennis. We can see that over there. And so if you simplify that on the calculator, you're going to end up with a value of 2 over 5. The next question is typical for an exam. Is gender independent of sport choice. So what they're asking us is, does your gender affect the type of sport that you would choose? Well, let's see what the numbers tell us in this table, okay? So we know from Venn diagrams and from previous videos that the formula for independence goes like this. This is something you just have to remember. They don't give you this on your formula sheet. So this is the independence formula. If the two events are independent, then this side would equal that side. So let's quickly go work out what the P of A and B is. Remember this N stands for and. Okay, but now what is A and B? Well, the two categories we are busy with in this equation is gender and sport. So you can choose whichever one you like for A and B. Just don't go choose male and female. You have to choose one of the gender genders, sorry, and one of the sports. So I'm going to go with female and tennis. Those are going to be my two categories that I'm going to look at. So what, where are the people who play, who are female and play tennis? So females who play tennis would be this column over here or that number over there because they are in the tennis column and they are also female. So there are 10 people out of a total of 200. Okay, so that's this part of the formula now complete. Now what we're going to go do is calculate that part. So just keep in mind that we have chosen our A as uh, female and we've chosen B as tennis. So the next part of the formula says probability of A. So that's probability of female. So that's female in total. Well, we can see that there are 100 females. So P of A is going to be equal to 100 out of 200. And I haven't simplified, but that's fine for now because I didn't simplify the previous one. I forgot. Now we just need to find the probability of B, which is the people who play tennis. Well, in total, there are 50 people who play tennis. Notice I'm not looking at their gender or anything like that. I'm just looking at all the people who play tennis. And so if we had to multiply the probability of A by the probability of B, we end up with a quarter. And if we simplify the probability of A and B that we had at the top, which was the 10 out of 200, that's going to give us 1 out of 20. And so is the probability of A and B, so that's this one, is that the same as 
this one? Well, no, it isn't. And so therefore, this formula did not work. And so that is the formula of independence. And so because that formula did not work, we will say that gender is not independent of sport choice. So we'll say no. So what that means is that the gender, if we look at these numbers, does determine the type of sport that people would play.